Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Game of Thrones book to show comparison for season one. So I met several people who had the very strong opinion that the books are far superior to the show even before I read the books I found this hard to believe because the show is so good. Honestly I do think it has a lot to do with personal preference as the medium of books and TV are completely different. Some people uh, may just gravitate towards one or another. And novels, you get a lot more background information. You get inside a character's head, uh, get to know what they're thinking. Uh, but with the show, you actually get to see and hear events unfold rather than just having them described to you. And personally, I always preferred the visual medium of hearing the background music and seeing the events unfold. So for the longest time, I refused to read the books, even though I knew the show was an adaptation. I preferred the visual meeting medium, so I wanted to stick to it. But eventually, I did read the books in large part due to being impatient and just sick of things being spoiled for me. And to answer uh, the question of which is better, the books or the show, I personally say neither. There are some things the show does better and some things the books do better. Uh, so this video is the first in the series where I'll go season by season to name my top five things I felt the show did better than the books and my top five things uh, the books did better than the show. So basically I'm judging the show on how good the adaptation it is, whether it exceeded the source material or failed to live up to it. So. Getting on to season one, I'll start with the top five things the show did better than the books. Uh, coming in at number five is uh, leaving out the journey to the Aerie. Uh, this was one that was quite minor and not that big of a deal in the long run. It was uh, it wasn't particularly bad in the books, but I think it would have been a complete waste of time in the show, and I'm glad they left it out. Uh, I suppose many book readers found the fact you had to take a long and dangerous journey on mules in order to get to the Eerie part of its character. Personally, I thought it was a waste of time, and even in the book it would have been better had they just left this out altogether. I also heard some book readers complaining about the exclusion of Maya Stone in the show, so when I read the books I was expecting her to be somewhat important, but she wasn't at all. I could certainly see why they left her out, in fact I would be expecting them to. Uh, number 4 is Sansa Didn't Tattletale on Ned. Uh, in the books, when Ned tells Sansa that they're leaving King's Landing, she's so upset she tells Cersei about it, including uh, their precise plans. Uh, in the show, Sansa is, is upset about Ned forcing them to leave as well, but she doesn't go as far to tell Cersei about it uh, like she did in the books. And I think this is a welcome change. People who watch the show hated Sansa enough as it is. If they added a blatant betrayal to the list, that would have down they would have downright despised her. Even the book, I thought this was a bit overboard and made me think so much less of Sansa. Plus, it was another thing uh, the character could totally beat herself up over, and I think her time in King's Landing was hard enough. There's no reason to make it even worse. Number three is the character's ages. A noticeable difference, uh, one that some book readers still complain about to this day, is how most characters are much older than their book counterparts. As in the show, about 17 years have passed since Robert's Rebellion, as in the books it was about 14 years. So Rob Stark, Jon Snow, Daenerys were all about 14 years old. Uh, Sansa's about 12. Uh, Ned and Catelyn are in their 30s, where in the show they're in their 40s or 50s. And basically any character you can think of is older in the show uh, than they are in the books. And I think it was a good call to age them up for the show, particularly Rob, John, and Daenerys, because although it's okay to read a story about a 14 year old leading people into battle and acting like a grown fighter, it's another thing uh, to actually see it on the screen. You just don't buy it. It's kind of like Ender's Game, where people love the, the books, reading about child geniuses who act like adults, but seeing it on the screen, you just don't buy it. Uh, number two is Renly's storyline. Uh, in the book, Renly barely appears, and when he announces that he's proclaimed himself king, it seems to come out of nowhere, and he just seems like some arrogant, power-hungry little prick. 
trying to steal his brother's thunder. Whereas in this show, they showed him uh, more through scenes with him and Loris and how Loris convinces him he should be king. And we also get more of his tenuous relationship with Robert and about how he's never been happy about how he just spends all his time drinking and whoring. Also, I liked how they implicitly made it clear that he was gay and Loris was his partner, whereas it was only hinted at in the books. I thought it brought a lot more character to the show. So when Rinley tells Ned he should support him and not Stannis, it doesn't seem to come out of nowhere. It makes a lot of sense. It fits with this type of character that they've established. And the number one thing I think the show did better than the books in season one is expanding upon more non-viewpoint characters. This is kind of related to number two, as Renly was one of the characters they've expanded upon, but this is more general and refers to a lot of scenes we didn't get in the books, because in the book, A Game of Thrones, they were only several viewpoint characters, most of them Starks, uh, plus there's Danny and Tyrion. Um, and because the show wasn't limited by this, we got all these wonderful scenes that fully developed some of these other characters and their interactions. In particular was Cersei and Jaime Lannister, who simply were cardboard cutouts in the first book. In fact, a lot of their material in season one was taken from later books when they did have their viewpoint chapters. Uh, some of the best scenes of this season were scenes like Cersei when she talks to Robert about how their marriage failed, or when Jaime he's telling Robert and Sir Barristan the story of his first kill or as I mentioned with Renly actually seeing Renly out in the hunt with Robert and telling him how he really feels I absolutely loved these scenes and thought they enriched the overall story and made it much more interesting so now I'll get to my top five things that the book did better than the show in season one or where the show failed to adapt uh, from the source material properly Number five is uh, the show had a lot of useless scenes. Uh, this is kind of related to my number one of what the show did better. It's kind of the flip side of that. Uh, they had a lot more scenes with characters who weren't viewpoint characters, and unfortunately, some of these were pretty pointless and boring. And the one scene in particular that I'm going to single out is what I think is the worst scene in the show with Maester Pycelle and Roz, where after they had just had sex, Pycelle is babbling on about what a great King Joffrey was. This scene was so boring, I hated it so much. When I first saw this scene, I I barely recognized those characters. I most certainly didn't care about them. Uh, this scene was just so unnecessary. Uh, plus, there were some other useless scenes, such as the scene with Theon and Roz, which was also pointless, and some of the Littlefinger virus stuff was a bit unnecessary. I read somewhere uh, that after they made the first season, they found that they were under time, so they had to make more of these character scenes to make up for the time. Well, this may have resulted in some of the great scenes I mentioned before, I'm sure it also resulted in some, if not all, of these pointless scenes. Number four is the show followed the book too closely. Uh, this may seem like an odd complaint, and in a reason uh, where I think many book purists like season one the best. I personally see this as a flaw, and it will hinder them in later seasons. Uh, Dan and Dave had, have admitted that since this was the first TV show they ever helmed, they didn't really know what they were doing at first, and thus made a lot of mistakes, and that they would become better and more confident in later seasons. I think uh, that was part of... Uh, Part of the fault of season one, they relied too much on the source material and didn't change things when they should have. Such as having the setup for Baron Dundarian this season, but then not actually following through with it until season three, and in no, in no one uh, who hadn't read the books would recognize him. And having characters like uh, Great John Umber who would just vanish into thin air at the end of season one. And many uh, other ways where they were just too dependent on the source material when they should have been going their own way. Number three is not adjusting for differences in characters' ages. 
So as I mentioned before, they aged a lot of characters up, and that was a good thing. But the problem was a lot of times they didn't adjust the way characters behaved or their dialogue to fit the age difference. And this was a problem throughout the entire series run, but I thought I'd mention it here because this is where it started. In terms of behavior, this is most apparent to me in Jon Snow. He's supposed to be like 17 or 18, and the actor is clearly in his 20s, and he still acts like a 14-year-old. To be perfectly honest, in the first two seasons, I hated Jon Snow because he was so incompetent and naive. But when I read the books, I loved this character because those traits made total sense for a 14 year old. And in dialogue, it's apparent when people refer to other characters as being young when they're really not. Most notably, the way people called Rob Stark the young wolf, and everyone was like, oh, he's just a child. And they made a point of people calling him boy as an insult, as, you know, and him getting all pissed off about it when clearly, Clearly, he's in his freaking mid-twenties. And especially uh, back in medieval times, uh, that's considered a full-grown man. And same with Daenerys, with Ned saying stuff like, Oh, she's just a girl. No, she's not. She's in her freaking twenties. It was a good call changing the ages, ages, but they should have adjusted the dialogue to match. Uh, number two is the prologue. And this is related to number four, as it's an example of the show following the book too closely. As the show chose the same scene from the book uh, to open, that opened the book to open the show with as well. And I gotta say, it was totally the wrong way to go. Uh, that prologue may have been appropriate for a book series called A Song of Ice and Fire, but this was totally the wrong scene to open up a show called Game of Thrones. It's obvious that the first season was uh, to be about the struggle of the throne and who was going to be in power. The opening scene should have set the scene for that storyline to unfold. Instead, it introduced the concept of the White Walkers and the Wall, which are two things that play a small peripheral part in this season. So it gives first-time watchers the impression the show is going to be about a group of Night's Watchmen protecting the world from ice zombies, when in fact that plays a very small and insignificant part in season one. Uh, I won't get too much into this until I get to my number one as it's related to that, but the show really should have opened up with an introduction to Robert and Ned via Robert's Rebellion as this would have been more important and relevant to the rest of the season. Uh, like, I think the perfect way to open the show would have been a brief flashback to Ned visiting Robert just after he killed Rhaegar while he was still healing, and Robert telling Ned he needs to march to King's Land to deal with the Mad King. Uh, if this would have been the very first scene we saw, it would have made everything else make so much more sense. We would we would uh, understand the relationship with Robert and Ned. It could then later explain the backstory of what happened once Ned did get to King's Landing and thus integrate the Lannisters into the storyline. And it would shed more light into the opening scene when Robert was reminiscing over Lyanna's corpse. It just would have been, it would have set the scene for the whole show a hell of a lot better and it would have made all the backstory make so much more sense. They should have done something like that, a prologue that was more relevant to Robert and Ned's backstory, which was to be the centerpiece of season one, not the White Walkers. They could be introduced later. And that brings me to my number one thing the book did better than the show, and that is explaining the history and backstory. Now, explaining history and backstory is always easier to do in a book because you can write paragraphs about it and go into a person's mind as they think about it. However, in the show, you have to explain things through dialogue, which is always a lot more difficult to do. Uh, they could have used flashback, uh, but that can be problematic as, re as well. Uh, in fact, apparently they had originally filmed a flashback to the Mad King killing Ned's father and brother and that was scrapped because apparently it didn't work. But they don't necessarily have to do flashbacks. If, for example, they had an opening prologue take place in the past like I had just explained, that isn't technically a flashback. It's starting the story earlier and then jumping forward in time when the show starts. This is something the show Firefly did and it worked very well for them. Anything would have been better than what they decided to do, which was to drop a few pieces of dialogue here and there. 
And I'm sorry, it's impossible for someone who hasn't read the book or heard the backstory from other sources to really understand what's going on. I felt really disconnected and unconcerned with things that happened before the show started, uh, which was a bad thing because a lot of these things come into relevance in the current storyline, such as Jamie uh, being condemned as the Kingslayer, uh, Daenerys and the Viserys' struggles, exile, and Ned's tenuous relationship with Robert. All these things make a lot more sense to people have read the books and I think they take it for granted that everyone watching the show should care about and understand these story dynamics but really there's no reason for someone who's only seen the show to care about any of these things. For example in season 3 when Jamie gave his speech about what really went down in King's Landing with him killing the Mad King I was supposed to empathize with him and look at his character in a new light but I didn't at all because I didn't give a crap about some backstory that happened years before the show began because I felt so disconnected from these past storylines because the show did a terrible job of integrating them into the current uh, time frame of the show. So that's it for my Game of Thrones book to show comparison for season one. You should check out my channel for other Game of Thrones videos including a weekly review of the new episodes and I will be doing book to show comparisons for the other seasons as well so you should subscribe so you can keep up with all that and thanks a lot for watching.